welcome to Feed Dump. This week, we are all birds. I'm an ostrich. I am basically a small dinosaur that runs fast. And if I don't like something, I bury my head in the ground. See me and literally all of Twitter in 2017. It's a good strategy. Join me this week as an osprey. I have an enormous wingspan and I'll eat all the shallow fish in Odell Lake. And an Australian barn owl. I chose the Australian barn owl because it rhymes. But then I realized it's not how a rhyme works. Thailand's Prime Minister decided he would evade media questions this week by bringing a cardboard cutout of himself to a press conference, propping it up, and then telling reporters to quiz it instead of him. The more surprising thing was when the citizens saw the report and decided to just rise up and install the cardboard cutout as the actual Prime Minister. I'm just picturing someone in the crowd being like, you know what? This guy says way less bullshit. Let's go with him. Just so you two are aware, this guy did seize power in a military coup in 2014. So I honestly wouldn't ask too many pressing questions or get on his bad side. All right. So one, I don't want to criticize the guy too much because I do want to go back to Thailand at some point in my life. But two, what a power move. Damn. Does this just mean that any narcissist with a cardboard cut out of themselves is probably going to start an illegal coup d'etat at some point. Wait, doesn't our friend Andrew have a cardboard cut out of himself too? We now go live to Flat Andrew for comment. No comment. Florida has experienced an unseasonable cold snap, which has brought some troubles to the Sunshine State, including icy roads and frozen iguanas. Turns out if the outside temperature goes below 45 degrees Fahrenheit, iguanas can kind of go into like a cold slumber. Basically, their bodies force them into a coma so they can survive the extreme cold temperatures and they will fall out of trees and stuff like that. Uh, wildlife experts are warning residents not to pick up iguanas because once their body temperature stabilizes, they will magically come back to life, aka leave torpor, and, uh, and generally be fine if they're big enough. And you certainly shouldn't do what one man did, uh, which was load a bunch of what he thought were dead iguanas into his truck uh, and then uh, get attacked by them while he was driving around. This has all the hallmarks of a perfect feed dump story. Unusual weather, smuggling animals, people too stupid to handle those animals, and Florida. This story was such a roller coaster of emotions. First off, I was thinking like Harold and Kumar where they hit that deer and it comes back to life. Secondly, I was picturing a dead iguana all Han Solo just like, and finally, who just collects dead iguanas? Why? People who find iguana delicious. Who eats iguana? Uh, lots of people eat iguanas, Surge. Yeah, he was picking them up to sell them to other people. But these are like frozen roadkill iguana. It's not like disgusting ditch iguana, Surge. It's like nature's flash frozen food product. That's just like freezer convenience right there. You just happen to pick it up from a ditch. But what if iguana is like crab? And if you eat it when it's already dead, you get sick. Holy shit, you're not supposed to eat dead crab? How are either of you still alive? Well, that's easy. I don't eat crab or iguana. This is just establishing more in this whole sinister mythos of Surge that we keep coming up with. You do eat crab, Surge. I have eaten crab with you at your ha- Oh, wait a minute, no. You invited me over, and I ate crab, and you were like, please, have some crab meat. And you even crap the cracked the crab shells. But- but you didn't eat any. None of it went in your mouth, and I didn't notice because I was just like, crab, 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 crab. What kind of crab vampire are you? Crampire. By the way, I wouldn't feel bad for these uh, Florida iguanas because they are, in fact, an invasive species. So if some of them die in a cold snap, probably actually better for the local flora and fauna. I would, however, feel bad for the passengers on a United Airlines flight from Chicago to Hong Kong uh, because their plane had to be diverted to Anchorage after a rowdy passenger befouled two of the on-plane toilets with his own feces and then tried to stuff his shirt down in the, like another airplane toilet. Turns out when there's that much poop around that you just have to land the plane. No, 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 come here. How do you befoul a toilet with feces? Toilets are made to handle feces. Every time I sit down a toilet, I technically befoul it. I don't see how this was a problem to begin with. Because, Beige, no matter how dank your bowel movements, they only befoul the bowl of the toilet, not in fact the outside of the toilet, all the walls and the door and every other surface inside an airplane bathroom, which was this. This was less of a, a movement and more of a Jackson Pollock expression. No, 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 cut to me. Now you're upset? 
Come on! It's bad enough that the plane had to be diverted to Anchorage, okay. And it's bad enough that the passengers had to sit through what was essentially a shit cane. But I think what's worse is that they all were flying United. Wait, Beej, aren't you about to fly United down to Pack South? If you don't see me in San Antonio, gentle viewer, I got caught in the shit Nami. Hold on, it's not just you flying to Pack South on this potential Dooker Cade, Beej. Cam, James, and Graham are all going with you. And as much as I want your flights to go smoothly, nothing to happen, I would love to see Cameron's face if he had to be diverted to North Dakota because there's some sort of poop tsunami happening. I mean, don't make it happen or anything like that, but just imagine it for a second. Of the four of them, Beej is probably the one to end up shirtless in the washroom, though. I want to be offended. Uh, harsh, but fair. Well, on that handy bit of character assassination, it's time to call this episode of Feed Dump to a close. But remember, there may be better sources of news, but they don't have Surge and Beej, and they don't have this delightful tam shanter bonnet. Wait, wait. Yeah, that's how do you wear these things? Like this? Sure. Uh, this was sent to us by Jack in Edinburgh. Thank you, Jack, for this warm and snuggly hat in Loading Ready Run colors. I mean, I don't, it's not like a Loading Ready Run tam shanter but, you know, it looks quite dainty. Yeah. Who's watching these toilets? How did this happen?